The Unique Models PC9 is available in several color schemes. While pretty much the same model, I was looking for the U.S. Air Force livery for what the Air Force calls the T6 Texan II. The Unique Models version of the T6 Texan II has been around for a while, but despite looking for it, I've always seemed to find it only after it had gone out of stock. There are a couple of built-up, almost ready-to-fly models of the T6 out there, but with the electronics and power systems, they get a little pricey. I finally found one in the Air Force colors and clicked Add to the Cart. It was a good thing I did as I went back to the vendor site a couple of days later and it was again out of stock. The T-6 Texan II is the U.S. military's primary flight training aircraft. I've got a bunch of instructor hours in its predecessor, the T-37 Tweet, so I was drawn to this one. The T-6 is a modified version of the Pilatus PC-9 built by Beechcraft in the U.S. It's 33 feet long, has a 33-foot wingspan, and stands about 10 feet tall. It's powered by a Pratt & Whitney 1000 shaft horsepower turboprop engine. The T6 cruises at 364 miles per hour and has a range of about 1,000 miles. As a military trainer, it's stressed to take 7 positive and about 3.5 negative Gs, which is just a bit huskier than the venerable tweet. The unique model's version is 47 inches long, has a 47 inch wingspan, and is powered by a 3648 640 kV electric motor with a 40 amp ESC. Unique recommends a 14.8 volt 22 to 2600 milliamp hour battery. These dimensions make the model about a 10% scale model. Let's take a look at what's in the box. So this is a quick view of the airplane in the box. It came in a heavy cardboard shipping container and then another cardboard top on this. As you can see, the pieces are wrapped in plastic and protected from each other by uh, foam. So it looks like a pretty good pack job and I'm guessing that there's not gonna be a lot of damage in there. This box here, Includes the propeller, the stacks, and servos for the wings. Let's lay it out on the table and get a chance to see everything that's in it in a little more detail. So with everything out of the box, you can see there aren't very many pieces. There's two halves of the wings. They've got a connector and wire, a uh, central mounting wire under here that you can see kind of a ribbon cable that should make it easier to put all of that, the servo leads from the wings into the, uh, the fuselage. The... Um, the exhaust stacks, uh, propeller, spinner, instructions, and the vertical and horizontal uh, stabilizers are about all that makes up this model. So it should go together pretty quick. You can see a plastic bag of parts over here. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to put in servos in the wings and attach the control horns to each of the um, control surfaces. Um, but that's a pretty easy task. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes with the instructions and see how I need to put this together. Okay, the first thing the instruction calls for is to mount the uh, servo in the recess that is there and then attach the servo horns uh, to, the, to the aileron. Now before I do that, I'm going to move the aileron back and forth, loosen that all up before I get to the point where I'm actually starting to put on the control horns and that kind of thing and uh, I've gotten that done. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use just a little drop of hot glue in here to mount the servo. Now before um, I started doing that I used my little servo tester. I've got a little battery and a servo tester here. Plug that in and then centered the servo uh, before I put the control horn on the servo. Uh, and that is just to uh, allow me then the opportunity to um, uh, get this on and ready to go uh, with the control horn the way it needs to be so that I can um, uh, get that in there 
with because uh, it would be hard to get off and attach after I get that mounted. So we'll get the control horn on with the, the servo centered. Otherwise, you can use a receiver if you want to. And then again, I'm just going to use a drop of hot glue in there because the servo fits really tight in that, um, in that recess. So I'm going to pop a little bit of hot glue in there. Okay. And then I'm going to squeeze the servo down in there before it cools off. Okay, so I've got all that lined up so the wire is in the right place for the molding uh, for the wire channel. I've got the uh, control uh, actuator from the servo in there and then I've got it in there. Now the reason I'm doing that is I discovered a really uh, cool trick with using hot glue and, and that is a little bit of rubbing alcohol uh, will cause hot glue to debind. And so if I have a servo failure, I'm going to be able to get a little syringe or a little, uh, you know, uh, pointy thing, drop some uh, rubbing alcohol or uh, down in there, let it sit for a couple minutes, and I'll be able to lift the servo out. So that's kind of a cool trick I discovered, and uh, I'm going to make use of that here in mounting this. For the rest of the stuff, I'm going to be using the um, glue that came with the kit. It's a contact cement, and so you just need to remember to use it like contact cement. So let's go after the control horns next. Now, most of the time, um, I plan to use the, uh, the glue that came with the kit. It's a contact cement. Uh, however, when I broke into the, the glue, the little seam at the bottom had ruptured, it looked like, and had dried it out. So there was really no use in this glue, uh, which gave me a great opportunity to use some foam tack, a beacon foam tack. I think I got this from Motion RC. And, um, the, uh, and it's a contact cement, so it should work the same way. And basically, all I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to reinforce the screws. And so I'm going to put a little bit of glue in that recess. I'm going to flip it over, put a little bit of glue in the upper recess. And then I'm going to take the, the parts that I'm going to be using to um, screw that screw that in cover them with glue and just kind of sit them in there pull that apart let it set for a second put it down this one I want to move a little bit um, when I get the screws through, so I'm not going to get in too big of a rush on that one. This one I'm going to do the same thing, just a little small dip of glue. Put it down so that it's facing the hinge, so that the control horn is right over the hinge line. And so interestingly enough, the, foam, the holes that are molded in the foam do not match the, um, the control horn here. And so we're going to be just kind of pushing these screws through, twisting and using the screwdriver to pop them in. We'll get two of them in kitty corner from one another so we get the angle right. And then we'll go after that piece on the other side before it sets up so that we make sure that we've got that all in alignment. We'll work it through the rest of the way. Make sure that we hit the hole on the other side. That one we were fortunate. It just went right in the hole. There we go. And we got that one through. We'll finish putting this one through. And then we're just going to put the other two in, kind of using that same, same technique to get those through. So let me finish those other two screws, and we'll be back. As you can see, I've got the um, control horn on. I've got all the little screws in there. I wiggled it some more so it all fits. 
Now it's going to be a matter of putting the control rod or push rod in. Uh, the control rod comes in two pieces. It's little metal with a, a Z-bend right here and then a plastic clevis. Um, and so I screwed on the clevis to where I thought would work, kind of did some rough measurements, uh, put it together, and then got it the fine measurements done by just screwing this in and out so that the aileron is level with the wing when you're done. And uh, so in this case, I'm going to go from the inside out on the hole. It's a pretty tight fit. Make the bend and then go into the top hole on the control horn on the elevator. and snap that together. Now, you may want to check this out, because the first time I tried it, I put it on the outside instead of the inside, and because of where I put the control horn, there was a bit of an angle. So putting it on the inside gives us a nice straight throw. It doesn't have any kind of an angle to it. Now, the next step, besides getting you know the wires down in the, the groove for the servo wire, is to put on the uh, skid plate or just the control rod cover. It's a nice little plastic cover. It fits nicely in there. Um, I can dry fit it here and it all works, so that's good. And again, I'm going to use this foam tack glue. I'm not going to go crazy with the glue because it's not supporting an awful lot. It just wants to hold it on. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue around the, the edges. And then a little bit of glue on the edges of the plastic. Put the lid back on so we don't get it to dry out. And then again, I'm going to put the piece down, wiggle it around to make a good connection. Again, this is contact cement. So now I'll take it apart. Had some stringiness there, so that's good. We'll just let it go for, you know, 10 seconds or so. Let it start to get tacky. And then put it back. And let it set up. So that's pretty much all we've got here to do on the wing. Um, now it's time to move to the other wing, which I'll do, and be back when I've got that done, since it's just a duplicate. Now with both of the wings completed, um, it's the instructions calls for the wings to be joined together, and they're glued together with a couple of um, what they call strengthening bars or spars uh, that go in a little bit later, but the first part is just the glue. And so as you can see, I've taken some sandpaper and, and roughed up the glue, uh, the paint right here, so that the glue has a better surface to um, adhere to. You can see one's up and one down. I'm going to flip that, but these are the surfaces that are going to glue, so I've got them both facing up at, right at the moment. So again, with the foam tack, just put a thin layer. Then with all contact cements, I'm going to push it together, let it set for a second, and then pull it apart. Now at this point, I've got to keep the silly wires um, <laughs> um, coming, coming through, so um, I'm going to have to watch that, both the, this, this push together part and the, um, the final assembly part. So we'll get these things together mush them together nice and tight, nice and firm, pull it apart. I've got some nice stringy strands going across there, which means the glue is tacking up. I'm going to give it about 15 seconds and then push it together kind of fast because I, uh, it's going to seat and seal pretty, pretty quickly. So there's not a lot of uh, messing around with um, fine adjustments when you push this together for the final time.
Okay, and that is stuck. It is not going anywhere. So I'm just going to hold this a little bit to make sure that it uh, stays in its final form until uh, everything sets up. It's pretty firm already, and so we'll do this for yeah a couple minutes and um, get on with the next step. So at this point, this, this seam is cured. Since I put that together, went and grabbed a bit of lunch and came back to have it nice and solid. Now at this point, we need to put in the wing strengthener bar, or basically the spar. Uh, it's a, it's a um, two pieces of plastic that are taped together and it's just going to squeeze right in there. Now to make that all happen, however, you need to get the wiring done first. And so I pushed up the wires from underneath, uh, connected the servo to the extension right over here in a little uh, cutout in the wing that was made just for it, for that extension to fit in there. Ran the wires through and then down and then did the same thing on this side. Got the wires coming through. These you can see. I got the orange side up, that side had the brown side up. Again, the, the extension has a wide spot that you don't have to cut out. It's molded right in for the wing for you, coming across. And then now it's going to be a matter of uh, pressing the spar into that spot. It fits really tight. I dry fitted it already, um, but I am going to put in a little bit of the foam tack glue. Again, I'm not going to pull it apart and push it together this time, so I'm going to give it a little more time to cure since I'm, I'm not using it exactly the way it's designed to be used. Uh, but you could probably use CA in here as well, but uh, CA has a tendency to um, make the wires brittle. And since I've got a bunch of wires underneath there that I don't want to um, get brittle and run the risk of breaking and shorting out, I'm going to use the foam tack and then just know that I'm going to give it plenty of time, plenty of time to cure. Probably could have used some hot glue in there too. A couple of a uh, couple of alternatives. So we'll get the uh, the spar is basically going to go between the uh, two molded uh, panel lines, and so we'll just push this in there, give it a good healthy shove into that channel. giving it support from underneath with my other hand. Get the rounded side of the, the handle to the screwdriver to get some pressure on that. And the goal is just to get it below the surface. I'm going to come back and catch some blue paint on that so it'll it'll disappear nicely. So we've got it across there. The wires were done beforehand and we've got it below the surface of the wing so it has a pretty pretty good appearance there. Now I want to do show you one other thing I plan to do and that is here you can see the wires so I'm going to turn them around and put them to the back side so they're not in your way. But then I also have a couple of pieces of carbon fiber. And with these wings that are primarily held together with glue, and because this is an aerobatic airplane, I plan to yank it around a little bit, I want to strengthen this. So we've got the seal, a good seal with the foam tack. It should be pretty good, but I'm going to reinforce that with a couple of pieces of carbon fiber. This is about uh, probably about three or four millimeters wide and about a millimeter thick. It'll bend a little bit this way, not much, but the long way, it's going to be really solid. And so what I want to do is make a cut, and I made a cut there with my hobby knife. And in this case, I am going to use just a little bit of medium CA in that channel. I'm just going to run a bead of CA in there. Don't need a lot. It fits really snug. And then I'm going to drop that piece of carbon fiber in there. And try not to get CA all over my fingers, so I'll use the screwdriver here and push that in. And so now pressure I've got on some hardness there, the stiffness across the seam, all the way across that. So that should be a little bit better. And then now I've got a second piece near the bottom. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just going to run a bead of CA across there, just a tiny bit. Just enough to hold it in place. 
and then I'm going to drop that piece of carbon fiber across the wing again. Now if you were planning to fly this really, really hard, you could extend that carbon fiber as long as you wanted to, really. There's a panel line right here that would work well, that would be outside of the um, landing gear on the bottom. But I think for me and the, my flying style, that the wing spar that comes with it on the other side, and then these little pieces of carbon fiber, uh, I've had uh, good success with that technique in the past, and so I suspect that will work, again, just fine. Now, there's one last thing to do on the bottom of the wing before we move on, and that is um, to put this little plastic piece on the bottom that'll hold the wing together, the joiner. And so again, we'll go back to the foam tack. There's a channel in there, so we'll get a little foam tack in there, a little across the top. Same thing on the piece, a little on the pegs. Push that in. Then take it out. Get the foam tack to air out a little bit. And then we'll just squeeze that in there. And that will be bound, bound in there nice and tight. So with that, we finished up with the wing. Now, I think it's time to take a look at the tail feathers. Now, the next thing we're going to do is put the control horns on the uh, tail surfaces. That's a little bit out of order from the instructions. They have us putting the, uh, the tail surfaces on the airplane, uh, but it's going to be a lot easier to get to the control surfaces when they're um, uh, open and easy as opposed to when the whole fuselage is together. I did do some dry fitting, however, on this first. So, you know, this is going to come together about like this and, um, and saw where the controls were going to be. So obviously on the elevator, it's going to be on the bottom side. So I know where I'm going to put that. And then I put a little mark here on the, um, the rudder. So I know where the, the rod is coming out of the fuselage and it's going to be on the right side. And so they're going to go on just like the, um, the ones did on the, on the ailerons. Little drop of glue in there. Again, the, the, um, the control horn is going to go right over the hinge. And as with the other uh, side, the mold in the, uh, the plastic itself does not fit the uh, the control horn, the control horn is quite a bit smaller. And so we've got that mounted and now just going to be putting the screw in through the foam. So now I've got the screw coming through with that. So I know where things are basically going to kind of fit. I'm going to put just a, oops, that was a little bit of CA there. That'll work. Put my plate down there to accept the screw. And then just screw it through. So I've got the um, screw there in the little receiver. So we'll go in with the other one beside it. So we've got the two in, and so the others are going to go in pretty much the same way. Again, going through the foam, you got to work the angles a little bit to get into the receiver plate. And so I'll have to be watching that. And it's looking like the front's maybe going to be a little thick. So it's going to be good that this is glued on as well, because I'm not at all sure that this little screw is going to fit all the way through. And I'll let you know when I get back in a second. So with the control horns complete, we're ready to get the fuselage over here and mount the empennage. Uh, the screws went in pretty well. The rudder ones, front ones, were a little short. Otherwise, they fit pretty well. And then I've dabbed a little bit of glue on there just to make sure that they uh, will remain secure. Okay, so we've got the fuselage back over here on the workbench. 
and uh, it's time to put the empennage on. So we can see that uh, this upper control horn kind of fits in a groove in here, so that's good. And then that's going to fit in here, so that's good. And then up here is going to be the vertical stabilizer. So let's put some glue down for this first part. So that's going to mean glue down here and glue here. You notice I sanded off here a little of the blue paint so I get the glue on the, uh, on the foam and not on the paint for a better adhesion. And again, I'm going to be using the foam tack, which is going to be very similar to the contact cement that came with the kit. Now we'll do the same down here. Hold that up out of the way and then work our way in to get it mounted in there and it fits, fits easily. Okay, looks pretty good there. So again, we're gonna raise it out Got a lot of nice stringiness there, lots of threads. That means the glue is going to tack up nicely. We'll just hold that there for 15 seconds or so. And now we'll slide it in the place permanently. And that's a very nice fit. Now we're going to do the same thing with the vertical stabilizer. I've got a sense of where that rod is. It's going to come out with a mold, kind of an indentation in the mold right there. And that's covered so we don't have to worry about glue. Okay. Good sense of what that is. So again, back to the foam tack. Same thing on the piece here. Again, we're going to put this in there. Move the control rod out to fit in its little slot. Looks like we have a very nice fit. I'm going to pull it out. The glue is nice and tacky. You can see some of the threads sticking there, maybe. The glue off the control rod. Okay, again, we've held that out about 15 seconds. So we're going to drop this in. Again, expecting it to fit tight, so we want to get it squeezed in there pretty quick. And there we have it. It's looking good. Now the next thing we have to do is put the clevises on the end of the push rod. So we've got the push rods out here and uh, the clevis looks like it's going to fit pretty well with about that same number of turns. This should be pretty easy to gauge since the other end's already hooked on. Just turn it a few turns, match it up to the holes, a few more. Match it up to the holes. Like half a turn more. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. We'll just open up the jaws to this, put it in the hole, snap it closed. I've got it from the second one down, and uh, when I get to the point where I'm programming my radio, I can come back and move that if I don't have enough throws on it. So uh, that one's just kind of a nice straight line 
on the push rod. The, um, the ends of the ailerons or the elevator here are level. So we're just going to leave it there for now and then we'll check it out with fine tuning when we get the radio installed. So it looks like we're pretty close to being done. So at this point I'm going to deviate from the instructions just a little bit. Uh, the instructions showed putting on the propeller and the, the exhaust stacks. I'm going to do that in a second. Uh, and so between these last two steps, I mounted my radio. Uh, I wanted to do that to make sure I had all the wires. I got the receiver and I put it about right here along the side panel inside the upper part of the cockpit so I could rebind it if I needed to. Did all of my radio programming and now I'm ready to um, put the wing on. I did have the wing connected to this little ribbon cable connector while I was doing that programming, but uh, I needed to get in here and I needed to get in here. And I don't like having the propeller on when I'm messing with radio and power on the airplane from a safety perspective. So the propeller is going to be the last thing I do. So now it's time for the wing to go on. We'll bring the wing around. We'll set it down gently here and plug in the the connector, you can tell because it's got the snap and the clip piece that'll fit together. Little snap there as they fit. I've got room for that now as I guide the wing in. I'm going to put that little connector on the side closest to you right now as that ribbon wire uh, needs a little bit of room down there. And then push the, the tongue or the tab underneath. Again, double check that I have all the wires out of the way. I do. And just give it a little push. Get it in right there. So that's looking good. That just slid right in. It's, it's snug, but it didn't snap or anything. Then I've got a large screw that fits in here. Again, using the screwdriver. That came with the kit. I'll just screw that in. And so that ribbon cable is kind of handy because it has the controls for the landing gear uh, and the controls for the servos there in that uh, ribbon cable. So it keeps it messy uh, from getting messy. I do have a, a bit of a rat's nest of wires in the fuselage from all the pieces coming together. Uh, but as you can see, they're hidden now and it's not a problem. So let me reverse this. And you can see that we've got um, the wing on and it's looking pretty good. So at this point, I am going to glue on the exhaust stacks and put on the propeller. So that's our next step. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is put the, the stacks on. And uh, these are these little curved pieces of uh, foam that were in a plastic bag. And... Um, and so we've got them here, and they're just going to go in the little indents right there. So I'm, again, I'm going to use the foam tack style glue. Get some glue down in there. Push that in there. Move it around. Pull it apart. Had some good thread threading there, so that's good with this contact cement. So again, I'm just going to wait here 15 seconds or so for the glue to get tacky before I set it. Okay, get that in there. And that's nice and tight. We'll rotate the fuselage here. Get glue and glue on the face of the, the exhaust stack for this turboprop engine that's used in this airplane. Get it in there nice and tight. Move it around so I get some good thin coverage over the whole thing. Pull it apart. Okay, there's my time. Put that in there. Firmly seated in there, and it's on there nice and tight. Uh, again, this kit comes in several versions, and as it turns out, I've got a black spinner in the actual T6. It's silver, so I may take this into the paint shop, but 
I would have rather had a silver spinner, uh, but in this case, we'll show you how it gets on there. The uh, plate goes in first and it fits into the sleeve of the motor shaft there. There's a, uh, an oblong metal piece and an oblong hole so you can, can't really get it wrong. Uh, then the, pe the propellers next, the propeller with the um, little decals to the outside, push forward on there with the uh, propeller up against the edge of the curved part of the back plate. Next, the washer, and then next, the nut. I'm going to get that on there nice and tight. Grab my wrench, just a little crescent wrench. Got it on there nice and snug. So I'll drop these little tiny screws that came out of the spinner back into their holes. And that'll allow me to get them with a screwdriver. Remember with these little screws, you're just screwing on the nose, the little shroud for the spinner. So you don't need to really cinch them down too tight. You don't, you don't want to run the risk of, of damaging them in the, uh, the little plastic receivers that they go in. Well, the last thing we need to do here before we get ready to declare the assembly complete is to check the balance or the CG. Now, most of the people are saying that this airplane flies with a, a CG uh, in, in a, re a reasonable range. Uh, one of the early reviews suggested uh, back at about 55 millimeters, the instructions and where the vendors uh, have the airplane for sale say at 20 to 30 degrees, which is quite a difference. Uh, as you can see, with the battery placed as far aft in the, in the fuselage as I can get it without getting in line or getting binding with the uh, canopy control arm, uh, it balances here at about 30 millimeters or three centimeters from the leading edge of the wing. Now, normally with a straight wing airplane, you would expect to have a CG at about 25 or to 35 percent of the cord of the wing, which would be at a back at about 50 or 55 millimeters. And so uh, at that point, the airplane is definitely a bit nose heavy. But the old saying is that a nose heavy airplane doesn't fly well, but a tail heavy airplane doesn't fly long. And so the people who have flown it with this CG say it flies fine. We'll get it out there. We're pretty confident we'll have a safe flight with this CG. Uh, and then we can make uh, final adjustments uh, when we get a feel of it actually in the air. So at this point, we've got that four cell battery that I'm going to use mounted as far back as I can next to the canopy control arm. And in fact, as you can see, the airplane balances at that 20 to 30 um, degree point and, um, and we'll see how it works. Now I've mentioned the electronic canopy a couple of times in the canopy actuator arm and uh, let me just show you what that means and how you're going to be dealing with this if when you go out to the field. Now the instructions suggest that you store the airplane with the landing gear retracted. And so to get the landing gear down and get the canopy open and all the rest, you're going to use this little plug here, which is a XT60 plug, which is the same as the plug on the battery I plan to use. Now, in this case, I've got the landing gear down, uh, but it would just be a matter of holding it on a stand, watching where you put your stand because the gear door is pretty big underneath. So you don't end up with a, uh, you know, binding the gear door and then having to raise and lower the gear again. It might even be easier just to hold it while you uh, extend the gear if, in fact, you're going to transport the airplane with the gear retracted. But the way you're going to get ready to go then is to take the, the battery and plug it in. I've got my um, electronic motor cutoff on my radio switch so the motor shouldn't come on and I've double checked that the throttle's in off so I don't accidentally uh, spin the prop here don't like having it plugged in in the workshop, but for this demo, I'll do it 
So we'll plug it in. There are the chirps from the ESC. And on my radio, I ended up on my DX9 on switch D. And the canopy uh, open. So at this point, I'll pull the plug out. And at this case, I'll bring the wires out from inside the airplane, plug the battery in, and then I'm going to put the battery, as I said, I'm going to have the battery located so that I've got it all the way back, just where it's not going to hit the control arm right back there. So I'm going to push these wires in, get them below the, the canopy, get them in the forward area there so it all closes nice and tight. Those wires being stuffed in there are going to keep the battery from sliding forward, uh, that's for certain. So I'll go back to the canopy switch. and the canopy closes. So that'll be the routine for loading the battery before and after flight. Um, the same thing would occur in reverse. You just take the battery out, plug it in, and then lower the canopy uh, that way. And then we've got the flight controls all working. You can hear them uh, as I manipulate those. So uh, at this point, with the balance done and the process is all in mind, I think we'll declare the assembly finished except for the point of using those cable ties around the control horn clevises to make sure that those little snap clevises remain connected. So it looks like we're in good shape here. And now for some closing comments. Overall, the fit and finish of the model was very good. The paint is good and the parts fit together well. I wish they would have provided the decal separately as some have some bubbles and could have been placed with a bit more care. The foam seemed strong and was smooth with no damage during shipping. The actual T6 has a silver spinner and the kit came with a black one. I think I'll take it off and do a little paint work. As I mentioned during the assembly, you may want to consider upgrading the clevises. They are a little flexible so you might feel better with firmer connections. Since the rods have threaded uh, ends, heavier plastic clevises should fit. This is a little older model as it has been out for a while. One indicator of this is that there's more to put together than on some of the newer foam models where it only requires a couple of screws to complete the assembly. For me, that's not a negative. I like having to assemble some steps along the way and it makes me feel like I truly had something to do with getting the model together. I didn't talk much about putting in the radio as your radio will likely be different. Since it's a fairly small model without flaps and other extra servos, I'm just using the stock ESC and the onboard BEC. I chose not to install a separate BEC or UBAC. Overall, I'm pleased with the appearance and from an assembly perspective would rate the model at about a seven out of 10. If you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to the rcplaneviews.com channel to be notified when I post new videos. I'm looking forward to getting this one out to the field. Let's finish up with a quick outside video walk around.